in the spring of 2023, the death of a charitable alumnus would forever change the technology center of a university. What do we do? What can we do? We could ask for more from the other alumni. Did you know we're blocked by more alumni than we have donating? <laughs> yeah, they did not like those posters we sent out to them. This isn't a joke, Maury. We have to come up with more money or we're up to our ears in debt. Well, we talked about downsizing the technology center that one time. Yeah, and we couldn't choose which school to drop. All are equally beneficial. What if we didn't have to decide? I saw this interview about an elementary school that couldn't decide where to go for a field trip. So, the teachers had the kids play Sharks and Meadows to decide. Uh huh. Well, let's do that. Tagged by a noodle, you're out. Last student standing decides which school stays. How long do you think this will take? Hour? Two hours? Within the first hour, thousands of students became tens. Each school took its own section of the tech center. Dwelling within the northwest corner of the second floor, technology and workforce. On the other side of the building, in the northeast corner of the second floor, graphics and imaging. Claiming the southern half of the second floor, the Engineering and Automotive Alliance stalked the shadows. And controlling the entirety of the first floor, construction reigned. After that first hour of battle, there was silence. Day became night, night to morning, when suddenly a shout was heard. In the early morning hours, the Automotive and Engineering Alliance launched a surprise attack on the remnants of the Tech and Workforce School. <laughs> the TWs never stood a chance. Among those attackers, a legend would be born. Jean Ball was not someone you'd want to meet on the battlefield with over 30 confirmed eliminations. Ball was appointed the official leader of the Alliance due to the elimination of their previous leader, but it was not without controversy. Several students claimed they'd seen Jean strike down their commanding officer in the heat of the battle. Others, however, claimed it was the TW that slew them when their back was turned. His victory would not last forever, as Yong Ball would be found eliminated within the hour. In honor of the esteemed leader, the hall he was eliminated in was to be renamed Long Hall de Yong Ball. As Yong left the building, infighting erupted, severing the alliance. It was brutal. In an instant, Automotive was out of the game, and only three engineering students remained. Led by Gervasio, the survivors of engineering snuck away to a secluded area. On the other side of the building, the School of Construction was drafting a peace treaty for the graphics and imaging schools. Witnessing the end of the last alliance, the School of Graphics denied the offer and launched a surprise attack. It was quick, but it was painful. 
leaving only sin. On the third day of the game, everything changed. Within this mysterious envelope, a series of riddles. Unable to solve the riddles, Finn sought out Ervasia. After 11 minutes of searching, Finn discovered Ervasio's grotto. Gervasio was in a dark place at the time. He knew his time was coming to an end, but when Finn brought him the envelope, there was hope. Using skills developed while helping his grandmother with her newspaper crossword puzzles, Ervasio made quick work of the riddles and sent Finn on her way to E203. There it was, enough money to sustain the school for a millennium. On her way out of the building, Finn tried to call President Dexamore to give him the good news. Unfortunately, she was in the hall with the worst phone reception on campus. As she turned the corner of Long Hall Dejong Ball, nightmares became reality. It was over. All that remained of the thousands of students was Finn and a handful of construction students led by Sarah. Finn didn't see a need to fight. She had riches beyond imagination that would sustain the university until the sun imploded. Though the footage was lost to time, the audio from Finn and Sarin's interaction lives on. I'm unarmed. Then this will be easy. Wait, wait! I found something, something bigger than this game, bigger than us. What are you talking about? Look, we don't need to fight. We can end this game and go back to normal. Construction cadets, who wants brand new equipment and the whole building to ourselves? Yeah! Now, who wants to go back to normal with our cramped classrooms, run-down equipment, Outdated software, etc., etc. No. All right. Get me that bag! 
Chased by the construction cadets, Finn makes her way to E-214 and hides. After the Seekers dispersed to look elsewhere, she waited. And waited. And waited. While waiting, Finn got to thinking. And while thinking, she came to terms with the truth. She would require an unwanted necessity. After reuniting with her blade, Finn went on a series of guerrilla attacks, foam on foam action so intense we legally cannot reenact it. Only Finn and Saren remained. The two agreed to meet face to face on the 44th second of the 44th minute of the 4th hour of the 4th day of Dexamore's game.